so what is up again you guys this is Angel look at the salad again for my another sick tutorial yes yeah, sick because we were making this 3d flat sphere this is actually a collaboration with my brother I will have a while for a 3D without morph. So yes, 3D without morph using PowerPoint 2010. Yes, it is possible. So check out I will have a while for his tutorial on how you can pull up this 3D pyramid. Yes, using only Microsoft PowerPoint 2010, purely. And also Camtasia if you, yeah. We cannot use any animations that does this effect because there's no any. But luckily, there is the grow and shrink animation that does that. It's just a matter of stacking them all together. In this tutorial, I will get a walk through you to the creation of this effect and talk about this special stack of tree animations. So let's start. To create this animation without losing out, open the guides feature on the view tab. This will help us later on. So the first step is to insert a perfect circle. By the way, if you want to make a perfect circle, press shift and control then drag the mouse to generate the circle. In the early example, we see that each shape is a semicircle. Of course, except the anchor point definer, which is the circle or square. To create the semicircle with this existing circle, you can use the merge shapes, cover the circles half with a rectangle and intersect them. But if you are using PowerPoint 2010, you can activate the Combine Shape feature and place it to the toolbar or the Quick Axis ribbon. It works the same. Now you've added a semicircle, fill it with a desired color, whether high or low saturated of the original color. If you are going from dark to light, select the lighter color and vice versa. Let's suppose that I am doing a dark to light orientation, so select the light color. Next, duplicate the shape and fill it with the lower saturate of the color. Place it to the right side of the vertical guide. Make sure it snaps to the guide though. The generated shape must have an anchor shape definer. It is the appendage of an object, commonly a transparent square or circle, that defines the anchor point of the main shape where its properties originate. To add the ASD, or the anchor shape definer to the shape, insert a square and try your best to aim it to the top right corner of the semicircle's boundary. Remove its fill and outline. We must add another semicircle this time flipped because that shape will form the final state of the sphere. To do it, click the semicircle, press Ctrl plus D to duplicate it. Go to rotate, Flip it horizontally, then place it to the left side of the original. Fill it with the same lower saturate of the color. For the next part, click the group with a semicircle and the ASD and duplicate it with Ctrl plus D. Fill the semicircle with the lighter color, then place the group to the left side of the vertical guide. If you are confused on what we have done, which I'm not saying initially, I'll give you a better view of each shape right now. This semicircle with the light color will appear with the use of the group with the dark semicircle and ASD that will be animated. This group with the light semicircle and ASD will cover the dark semicircle on the left. This creates the elusive sequence of a circle orienting from dark to light. If you want to name each object in the slide, you can rename it with the use of the selection pane. This will prevent you from distractions with the name of the objects. Let's go to the exciting part, animating. For the first sequence, add a grow shrink to the group with the dark semicircle and ASD. Go to its effects options, set the size to 0%. Increase the smooth start to whatever high setting. As you can see, we don't like to shrink that shape in that way. So we need to change the direction to horizontal setting in the direction. Now we pretty much get the first part. In the appear sequence of the light semicircle, we see that we cannot make that grow horizontally. 
This Weevil animation kind of works, but it doesn't have proper settings. And now is the time to reveal the special ingredient to this whole effect. Let's add an appear animation and two grill shrink animations. I will explain every details of this effect. For the appear, set it to play after previous. For the setting of the first grow shrink animation, set the size to 1%. and set the time or duration to 0.01 seconds because it will not animate. This retains the pixel definition of the shape to be resized by the second grow shrink animation. I set the size to 9899% for the second grow shrink. This will animate the shape to its original size. I didn't actually know why 1000% is the value of the original size of the grow shrink, but let's just deal with it because it works. Set it smooth and to whatever high setting. Also set the two animations to grow horizontally. We are somewhat done, but there is sort of a problem here. You see that the left side glitches caused by the first growing animating with the appear animation. But don't worry, it is easy to fix. You just need to set the appearance delay to 0.01 seconds to make it animate after the grow shrink. The important thing though is that the animation the important thing though is that the appear animation must be atop of the first grow shrink in the animation pane. Now we got the flat sphere animation. <laughs> so we are done with the 3D flat sphere. However, if you want to create this 3D flat pyramid, check out Abby Abrawal's video. I will link it in the cards so you can so you can complete your knowledge about the 3D Weather Morph if you're not using Microsoft PowerPoint 2013 or 2016 or Office 365, which I haven't owned. Yeah, I am a proud user of PowerPoint 2010, and I love it. So that's it again, guys. Thank you for watching, and check out everyone's world's video, and also subscribe. Um, so like and share, subscribe, and yeah. Yeah, check out every other world, and me, subscribe to him, and me. So thank you for watching. Yeah.